Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about hashed message authentication code or HMAC. So we have discussed in our previous video about uh, message integrity or the data integrity which is one of the five key principles which should be the goals of any cybersecurity professional to ensure that the information remains secure. So one of the goal was uh, message integrity and that message integrity or to achieve that message integrity we discussed in detail about the use of hash function uh, but today we are going to discuss uh, uh, so we discussed something about integrity and uh, today we are going to discuss HMAC which will not only be providing us integrity of the message but it will also be giving us authentication and authentication refers to the verification of the identity of the sender of the message so for that we used hash function and the hash function actually is a function let's say there's a magic box and in that magic box uh, let me bring my pen here excuse me here so this is a let's say hash function and in this hash function we use our message and uh, that message can be any message let's say email video audio any message and this hash function on the basis of that message generates a hash value and that hash value can also be known as like fingerprints message fingerprints or message digest there are different names of that anyway we have discussed this in our previous video and today we are going to use the same hash function for hmac which will give us uh, not only the um, integrity of the message but it will also give us the authentication that who is the actual sender so in that case simple let me remove here so when we are only uh, trying to ensure the integrity of the message and what happens we are just verifying that the message which we have received that is the message which was sent but we were not verifying that who is actually the sender of the message so this message may be coming from this user let's say user c or user d but we we in this case with hmac we want to send we want to verify the identity of the sender as well and for that as an example i have taken the here these two cartoons let's say this is mr a and this is miss b any name so let's a and b and they want to send some message to each other but here they not only want to uh, verify that the message a has not been changed during its transmission uh, from the sender to receiver that message remains same but in this case let's say anyone can actually generate any new message and they can also calculate the the let's say hash value of that and then they can send it and the user can only verify that the message has not been changed but here if there is any man in the middle that may intercept and that can change it so now in this case in with hmac we want to verify that who was actually the sender of the message and for that we use hmac and now we are going to explicitly define that and yes this is some in some uh, books or uh, uh, some uh, in literature we have this name keyed hash message authentication code so yes these are two users and let's say this user wants to send some message to this user let's say to b so this user generates a message and this message can have any length so that will be the variable length input and that message will be used as an input to our hash function and now in this hash function in addition to message we will also be using one key so that will be key that key actually will be any number let's say this can be any binary number any anything which we are going to use as an input to this hash function so now message and these this key is being used to generate uh, a hash value so hash value is applied both to the key and the message and now they see that we have this hash value and now this hash value or this message digest will be sent to the receiver and yes this hash function will generate a fixed length output this is also uh, say this is a one way function and now this will send this message so the sender will send the message as well as this hash value to the destination here and let's say this has been received at the destination like this this explanation i have just 
background like this. So this user has received the message as well as the hash value. And now this receiver will also be using the same hash algorithm which is sent or which is being used at the transmitting end. So this user know that what hashing algorithm is being used at the transmitting end. So same hashing algorithm is being used at the destination. In addition to that, this user will have a copy of this key. So exactly the copy of that key will also be here at the destination. And now that key and the message will be used as an input to the hash function at the destination. And the hash value will be calculated at the destination end as well. So now you see this message has been received by this user. User has a copy of the sender's key and now they are using this hash func algorithm to generate a hash value. And this is the hash value which was received from the sender. See, so during the reception time message as well as this hash value was received and on the basis of message, a new hash value has been calculated at the destination. And now this hash value and this hash value, they are compared with each other. And during comparison, if both of the hash values are same, it means this message has not been changed from its transmission or from your uh, so from from its travel from source to destination. This is verified. In addition to that, this key ensures that this key ensures that the sender of the message is the let's say Mr. A because we know we have the copy of the key used by Mr. A. If you use maybe any other key, this will not be, this will not, uh, I mean, this, this hash value will not match. And let's say if there is any other one, let's say here, there is some other, uh, let's say, person who is also going to receive that message. And in that case, if this user will calculate the hash value, then this user will not have the key, which actually these two users are sharing with each other. So they have the copy of that key with each other. And now how they are sharing or how they are sharing, I mean, how they are creating this key and how they are making sure that they both have this symmetric or exactly same key at the sender and receiver that will be, I mean, we'll discuss in some other video. But here says that they, when they agree that we want to send and receive something, then they also agree on a, on a mutual key and that they only these people know about that key. So in this case, let's say there's a third entity, that entity will not have this key. And if they are going to generate the hash value uh, and, and then then transmit, then this will not be matching here. So this is actually uh, the idea behind uh, the use of HMAC. Then with the help of that key, let me remove again this, all things. So with the help of this shared key, they are going to ensure that the message is not giving us the hash value um, with the use of this key it means that message has not been transmitted by this user so that is important the use of key in this HMAC is important which is helping us to uh, not only uh, provide the integrity of the message but it's also ensuring the authentication of the message on the basis of this key uh, so anyway, this was uh, some discussion about HMAC and hope to see you in some other video.